Let's go. Hello, everyone. My name is Ernie Davis, and I'm going to teach you about roots. About Nanny Helen Burroughs and Dr. Percy Julian. Who are we? We love museums and learn about Black history. We love sharing what we learn with others. Everyone deserves to know their history. We will build confidence in children, your children, and inspire them to read stories about real life heroes and sheroes. So, as you see in the picture, we went to a museum uh, and we saw about these heroes called Fanny Barrier Willem and Nanny Helen Browse, like you will learn about. Let's help everyone have fun. First, listen to a speaker. Second, email us when you have a question. Thirdly, explore Bookshare today. Have fun. Share what you learn with others. What's what's with Nanny? Who was Nanny? Nanny Helen Burroughs was born in May 2nd, 1879 in Orange, Virginia. Her widowed mother brought her to Washington, D.C. in pursuit of a better education. At the M Street High School, she excelled under the guidance of delicate teacher like Mary Church Terrell, her mentor. Nanny graduated with honors in 1896, so that means she very worked hard. How did she achieve her goals? Manny went all women to have right to, the right to a good education, relying on small donations from black women and children from the community. Nanny managed to raise enough money to open a national training school for women and girls in 1909. Those enrolled could take classes like dressmaking, handicrafts, poverty operation, public speaking, music, and physical education. Would you try one of those activities? And students from Canada, Africa, Haiti, Haiti and Puerto Rico boarded her school. Wow, that's everywhere. In 1928, a larger building named Tradis Hall was constructed. The hall housed 12 classrooms, three offices, an assembly area, and a print shop. Wow! Does your school have a assembly area or a print shop? That's amazing! The president of the National Association of Colored Women, Mary McLeod Bethune, spoke at a dedication ceremony. Wow! Mary McLeod? Mm hmm. Remember her? How was she successful? She was appointed by President Herbert Hoover to chair a special community on housing for African Americans in 1912. She began a magazine called The Worker for Those Doing Missionary Work. And something shocking happened. She was a friend to Dr. Martin Luther King's mother. In 1956, she wrote to King's mother, Alberta, expressing her interest in the calm, sure way that Junior is standing up for right and righteousness. She served as a president of that institution until her death in 1961. In Washington, D.C., 601 50th Street, N.E. was named Nanny Helen Burrow Street. Remember Ida B. Wells and she was named after that street? We, they can relate. Mm -hmm. Nanny family, he said, education and justice are democracy only life insurance. Wow, she was very successful. Here's an activity for kids. Think about a person who made a difference in your life. 
interview that person and talk to them about his or her experiences. Take a photograph or draw a picture of that person. Keep a scrapbook of interviews and pictures of people who are important in your life. My readout is my papa. I interview to learn more about what life was like when he was a kid. So my first question was, how did you drive cars back then? Was it horse and boogie? <laughs> I had a good laugh on that one. His answer was, we drove cars back then just like you do in the present. He just didn't have a lot of money. He got his first car at 72 year olds, but it was broke, old and broken, but he fixed it. The second part was, how did he play? His answer also was, to, he went swimming, going to the woods, build fires, and he had lots of imagination, also his buddies. And lastly, I said, were phones invented? He said yes, with the first one called Party Lines. Funny name. <laughs> it was a phone that didn't have numbers, and you can only call when it was your turn to call. That's all. Let's move to teachers, to scientists. Who was Percy? Percy LaVon Julian was born April 11, 1899 in Montgomery, Alabama. He attended school through the eighth grade, but there was no school open to black students. He applied to DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana. He had to take a high school level classes in the evening to get him up to an epidemic level of his peers. He graduated first in his class. Just like Webb Du Bois. Mm -hmm. Just like W-E-B Du Bois. You're right. In 1903, he received a scholarship to attend Harbor University to finish his master's degree. But the university was not willing to pursue his doctorate because he was black. Unfair. But Percy didn't let that stop him. He traveled to the University of Finnell in Austria and graduated with a PhD in 1931. And in 1935, he married Anna Brozell and had two children. How did he reach his goals? In 1935, he earned international acclaim by synthesizing FISO stigmine, as you will see in the picture. FISO stigmine. FISO stigmine. From the calabar be bean to create a drug treatment for glaucoma. In spite of his success, the university refused to make him a full professor because of his race. Julian applied for jobs at cattle companies, but was rejected when they discovered he was black. Wow. But he finally obtained a position in the Glidden, Glidden Company as a lot director. He invented Aerofoam, a product that uses soy protein to put out oil and gas fires and was widely used in World War II. It was also celebrated for his synthesis of cortisone, and which became used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis, good job. Arthritis. How was he successful? In 1973, Julian became the first black chemist elected to the National Academy of Sciences. In 1990, he was elected to the National Inventors Hall of Fame. In 1999, his synthesis of physostimine was recognized by the American Chemical Society as one of the top 25 genes in the history of American chemistry. There was a school named after Percy Julian in Chicago, Illinois, where we live. Okay, so 
and now we'll go to the video. Yeah, now we can watch a video about the Hit mom. Percy LeVon Julian was raised in Montgomery, Alabama during the Jim Crow era of forced segregation. He would go on to become one of the great minds of chemistry in spite of the hostile world in which he grew up. In 1916, Julian was accepted to DePaul University in Indiana, but he was not allowed to stay in on-campus housing. He quickly made a deal with the Phi Beta Kappa fraternity to stay in their basement in exchange for cleaning the house and fixing meals for the fraternity members. He graduated first in his class from DePaul in 1920 and was selected as the class valedictorian. Julian earned a master's degree from Harvard, but was denied entry into PhD programs in the United States because he was black. Eventually, he received a fellowship to study at the University of Vienna in Austria, where he earned his PhD. It was here that he began to unlock the secret chemistry of plants. In 1939, Julian returned to the United States to work for the Glidden Paint Company. His research led him to the discovery of methods for extracting material from plant matter that could then be synthesized into compounds like progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol. His discoveries have been used in treatments for inflammation, in hormone therapy and as immune system suppressants to name just a few. Many of Percy Julian's methods and discoveries are still widely used today. Now that we watched the YouTube, you can learn more by reading books at the public library near you. That's the end of our class. Next class at November 21st, 1.30, we will do Winston Hughes and Shirley Chinson. And as I said, that's the end. Questions? Okay, everyone, that was a great presentation, Professor Ernie. I do apologize, a few of us are having some technical issues. Um, so while we're trying to work that out, um, we might need to use the chat or the Q&A um, until we can get our tech support down here to help. <laughs> no problem, we can see the chat. So if anyone has any questions, you can uh, type it into the chat and we'll try to answer. Wonderful. <laughs> I see a hand raise, but I don't know if you uh, if we can um, take it off mute. Oh, yeah, I see the chat now. Charles Williams says, great job, Ernie. Lots of great jobs. It, it is my duty to teach roots to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a question. Where does your papa live? My papa lives in Ohio. Do you want to tell a joke about before he told you the car? What did he tell you that he had? That he had a horse in a horse and boogie named with <laughs> the horse named Roy. <laughs> Got funny. Okay. Oh, thanks, Matthew.
Matthew. Okay, it looks like uh, some of the comments are slowing down, Miss Joyce. We may be able to wrap it up. All right, we'll just do one oh, last. If one. you Go didn't ahead. have a question, or or you we don't have time, you have time for it. You can still email us. Email us a question. That's right. And uh, tune in next month, Langston Hughes and, and Shirley Chisholm. Going to be some good topics. And don't forget, brace your roots. That's right, embrace your roots. That's Goodbye. a great idea. Um, I do apologize for the technical difficulties. We should have the microphones working next, next class for sure. Awesome. Thank you. See you next month. Bye.